located in the mountain village of Hasliberg Golden, in the heart of the Swiss Alps, the École de Manité lies between Luzerne and Interlaken, surrounded by awe-inspiring, world-famous peaks. Tucked into this picturesque landscape, our international village for living and learning is home to children and adults from some 25 different countries. The tranquil natural setting provides a wholesome learning environment. The mountains provide superb opportunities for outdoor activities such as rock climbing, kayaking, hiking, skiing and snowboarding. Family is a microcosm of the larger school community, where the values of mutual respect, cultural tolerance, caring, and open communication are learned and practiced. 150 students of varying ages live in the École de Manité's 20 houses and chalets. Each student is in one of the 17 families. Each family has two teachers as family heads. These two teachers and six to ten students form a family live together in one of the school's houses, and eat together at one table in the common dining room. Living with a mixed group, including both sexes and various cultures, provides our students with a truly international living experience. The familiar atmosphere they engender helps new students to feel at home within a short period of time. Part of growing up is learning to make decisions for one's life. At the École de Manité, the students have to make a whole range of decisions, starting with which academic courses they will take. New students are assisted by experienced helping students who show them what courses are available and introduce them to the teachers of the courses. The teachers help to advise the students on the courses they will need to take for graduation and on the level, of course, that would be best for them. And to be able to grasp that or something like that? Have you done this kind of work? Have you forgotten a lot? Students take only three academic subjects per trimester in the morning of every school day. Freddie, do you want to explain to Hannah why the central angle measures 55 degrees? Um, How do you measure it? You use well, a protractor. I know. <laughs> I feel like see, since I'm a big protractor, I actually extended the line. Okay. The strong points for me, teaching at the ACOL, are definitely the contact that I get with the students and the relationships that I build, build with the students. For a while, I went into a school where there were 40 people in my math class. And there you took a test almost every single day, and you really didn't get much out of it. I was always really horrible in math, but ever since I've been in these small classes, it's gotten much easier, because I can talk with my teacher a lot, and she can keep explaining it to me until I really understand it. At the end of every class, I'm able to go around and help the students on their work. And this is, like, amazing, because I, I don't think you can get this in many other schools.
Today's class was taking a very familiar phenomenon, just the burning of a candle, something that every student knows and sees every day. And yet, we're looking at this phenomena in a new way. Students are discovering things about the burning of a candle that they never saw before. Through something familiar, we get their attention, and then we can take them on to the more complex chemical concepts about the atoms and the molecules, the reactions, and so on. Okay, let's talk about it now what we've been doing. Right. What, what are your observations other than the color difference? What are other differences between the black and the gray smoke? Is it easier to light the gray smoke? It's easier to light the gray smoke. Can you light the black smoke? No. It kind of strengthens the flame of the smoke, but it doesn't light. OK. The gray smoke lights. The black smoke doesn't light. Does everyone agree with that? Mm-hmm. All right. So then. We focus mo mostly on the gray-white smoke. Do you have any theories about what's going on? Why does it matter if the mesh is cold or hot? One thing I like about the way this course works is that the students get to discover a lot of the information for themselves. We do an experiment. I don't tell them what it's about. And then I ask them questions, and they have to try to figure it out. And then they have ideas for more experiments to try to get to the bottom of the situation. And in the end, they've gotten the information that they need, and they'll remember it much better. This experiment was really fascinating for me, because I didn't think, well, actually, we captured the white gas from the flame, and then we sent it to this other beaker. And then I didn't think that we could like actually catch gas, because like, you can't really. <laughs> it's gas. And I love the way like, the smoke really sank into the water, like, just like sand, and it was really nice. It was touching. <laughs> when we saw the smoke coming out of the water and we got to see it solidify again on the water, because I wasn't expecting that at all. I was actually expecting to do a different experiment with that, but yeah, it was really interesting to see that happen again. Yeah, <clears throat> it was really cool to see, like, the smoke pouring out. And I, I don't know, it looked like the milk at our milk bar. Uh, yeah, it was really cool to see it solidify and then touch it and smell it and actually see that it wasn't really the same thing it was before. In my French theater course, I start with a poem, and the idea is that out of a poem, a play will develop. We aren't learning French. We are doing something in French. That's how little children learn. They don't study French. They learn to express themselves in French. So we use the language to do something and learning the language comes in the back door. I learn a lot here because we're writing the play by ourselves. I'm learning a lot of French because we speak a lot and only in French. Creating our own play would be fun anyway, but doing it in French is really cool. It's very good that we have the course every day. That gives continuity. You can't only play and you shouldn't only be strict. It's important for me that the strictness be there, and the closer we get to the performance, the more rigorous our work becomes.
Han sa vart på så under bussen. Mikitte sa man detta så. So it's going to be your first point. The Ecole de Manité offers students a U.S. high school program for North American, British, Australian, and many other colleges and universities. German-speaking students can receive a Swiss education that prepares students for a variety of future options, including apprenticeships, art schools, and university study. The academic courses in the mornings are taught in English or German. The afternoon courses are usually taught bilingually so that both languages are heard about equally in daily life. The small classes, longer class times, and an emphasis on learning by doing lead to more joy in learning, to deeper understanding, and therefore provide a foundation for a lifetime of continued learning. The afternoon at the École de Manité establishes a balance to the intellectual work of the morning. This is the time for movement, for exertion, for creativity. With a range of over 70 courses, students schedule their afternoons with sports, handicraft, art and music. The lively, friendly atmosphere among the students, and between the students and teachers, promotes motivation and learning. Team and communication skills that will be needed later in life are learnt naturally and in a variety of settings. With so many new activities, students often discover strengths they never knew they had and interests that develop into careers or lifelong passions. The reason I wanted to come here was basically the environment, the atmosphere, and the nature, you know. And that was the main reason, because I live in this big town and city. It's totally different here. And I wanted something new and different. But the reason why I wanted to come back was also, like everyone said, that the community, it's small, but it's really tight. Like, I was just climbing for a few hours, but I really missed the family. When you guys came, I was like, oh. Like, really nice to see you guys again. And, like, I feel like I have, like, sisters and brothers and mom and dad here. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the reason I came back here. Sophie's an only child, and so it was important for us to let her spend some of her teenage years living in a community. And this turned out to be just what she needed. She found a real sense of belonging in this group of young people. This year when we dropped him off, as opposed to last year, he was excited the whole way here. Yeah, he couldn't wait for I couldn't wait to, to see his friends, couldn't wait to uh, uh, see the teachers. Mm -hmm. Sophie 
geht nach Hause und Sophie kommt. Sophie goes home and Aber Sophie comes home. She has two different homes and both are very important to her in different ways. <laughs> Here you can just be who you are. You don't have to be afraid of being wrong. You don't have to try to pretend to be someone you're not. You don't have to be superficial. People accept you as you are. You find out what you can actually do without. You don't really need a cell phone. You don't really need a TV. You don't really need all those things.